Now let's talk about using Strike to overlay some drums over the drums which I have previously time corrected in order to beef them up a little bit and have a little fun with my sound. I'm going to go ahead and select an audio region right here that I know I want to work with. And this is just going to be the region that I had previously time corrected. So now I've got my region selected and I'm going to go ahead and add Strike to my session. I'm going to click Track. I'm going to scroll down. I'm going to select New. Now in the New Tracks dialog box, I'm going to select Stereo and Instrument Track and hit Create. This is going to create a new empty instrument track. Now I'm going to open up my mixer and I'm going to select Strike as my instrument. So I'll just scroll down to multi-channel plugin, instrument, and then I'm going to select Strike Stereo. This is going to open up Strike inside of my session. And now I can start playing around with Strike. Now the beauty of Strike is that I have access to a number of presets in my browser right here. Each of these presets matches up with a number of different musical types. The song that I'm working with is kind of a metal song. I'm going to go ahead and use Metal Ballad. I'll just double click on it. And now the Metal Ballad preset has been loaded up into Strike. You're going to notice that down here on the bottom of Strike I have this little virtual keyboard. Now this virtual keyboard will match up to your MIDI keyboard. So you can see as I play some keys on my keyboard there, that launches a new phrase on Strike. Now each of these buttons matches up with a new phrase inside of Strike. So this allows me to play one phrase and then move on to another phrase and figure out the different portions of my song that I would like to add Strike to. So in this case, the key D1 is mapped to Play Metal Ballad A, and as I move along with my keyboard I can see all of the different mappings that I have right down here in the bottom of my strike window. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm just going to go ahead and play a little bit of the Metal Ballad Verse A. And I can do that by simply clicking on one of these buttons and Strike will start to play back. You're going to notice that I'm not playing back with my Pro Tools session right now. And I'm going to go ahead and do this just because I know that there's some parts I want to add to my drums. So I'm going to go ahead and click on D1 to play Metal Ballad Verse A. And then I'll go ahead and switch it up and jump over to verse C. And then come back to verse A a little bit. And then I'll go ahead and stop by hitting the red button, which is also C1 on my keyboard. Okay, so now what Strike has done is it has filled its MIDI cache with the performance that I just did within Strike. So it's basically memorized all the buttons that I pressed and when. And what it's going to allow me to do now is to import the MIDI for these verses that I have just created inside of Strike into my Pro Tools session. Now what I can, the way that I do this is by clicking on Export MIDI and clicking and dragging into some empty space inside of Pro Tools. Now I'm going to get the MIDI Import Options box. Here in the MIDI Import Options box, this is just the same as if I were importing MIDI from an external file. I have the option to choose my destination, and I can choose my location as to where I would like for these MIDI files specifically to go. Now, the reason that I had made a selection previously is that I knew I wanted to put some new drums over the piece that I had previously time corrected in my audio region. So under Location, I'm going to select Selection. You can also select Session Start and Spot, depending on how it is that you're working in your project. I'm going to use Selection, and then I'm going to go ahead and click OK. Now what's going to happen is I'm going to get a grip of new MIDI tracks that have been created by Pro Tools for Strike. Now you're going to notice that immediately these new MIDI regions which have been created are showing up and matching up with the selection that I previously made in my audio region. But you're going to notice that they're gray. The reason for this is that I need to map them back to strike. So to do this I'm going to go ahead and open my mixer. And now in my mixer I'm going to route each of these channels to the appropriate virtual track inside of strike in order to make sure that I get my audio output. Now the way that you can tell which channels you need to map up to strike is by taking a look at your tracks. You're going to notice that they're automatically named. In this case I've got Strike Kick Channel 3, here I've got Strike Snare Channel 4, Strike Hi-Hat Channel 5, and so on. If I had more tracks I would see more tracks being created. So what I'm going to do is in my mixer 
Under my output pull down, I'm going to click and I'm going to scroll down to strike. And now I'm going to match each of these channels up with the appropriate channel that it is named after. So I know that channel three is my first, so I'm going to select channel three. And then I'm going to select channel four under strike on my next following track. And I'm going to select channel five as output here on my next track. So now what you're going to notice is that each of these regions now has some color to it. That means that it's alive. It's going to talk to strike appropriately. They've all been routed correctly. And now what I can do is I can play back this region and I can hear how strike is going to match up with the drums that I've created. Now, because I did a pretty basic selection when I was selecting my audio region before I started to play around with Strike, I want to zoom in and I want to take a look at how these MIDI regions came into my session here. And it looks like I'm a little bit off. I missed the point a little bit because I know that in this case I would like to start beeping the drums up about on this transient right here. So that's easy to do. All I need to do is go ahead and move these MIDI regions over a little bit. Now before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and enter a different grid mode. I'm going to click on grid and let's go ahead and go into, let's say, 1 16th. This will give us a tighter grid that we can work with, make it a little easier to move these around. So I'm just going to move these MIDI regions over a little bit to make them match up with the beginning here of my actual passage after this initial snare drop happens. So now that I've done that, let's go ahead and play this back and see how it sounds with Strike layered over these drums. So that's pretty cool. I've added some beef to these drums. It definitely sounds a lot more powerful using the Strike engine. Now, of course, I can add all manner of different effects to these drums as I move along. I can play with Strike and its timing and many other great options and effects that I get access to inside of Strike. So you'll want to have some fun with it in order to just kind of figure out how you can make it work with your project. But you can see right here how easy it is for us to time warp some audio. And then, using Strike, we can add some quick and easy accents to our project and really have some fun and beef up our project. As always, I hope that this has been useful to you guys. Please keep in touch with me. I'm Brian at Obedia.com. You can get me on Twitter at Twitter.com forward slash ObediaTutor and on Facebook at Facebook.com forward slash ObediaTutor. Thank you for watching, and until next time, happy music making to you.